Hello and welcome to the fifth session of Monday Morning Mojo, a program created for you by Fine Wealth, where we use words wisely to equip you with the power to convert your talents, your skills, and your passions into worthwhile, decent, income-generating activities. I'm your mentor, Magdalene Kamawotieno. Karibu. Now, let me find out something. Do you find yourself browsing through questions and posts that are posted in um, entrepreneurship forums? I mean, you're an entrepreneur, you are into business, I would expect you to go there. But um, I've actually been noticing something, that I actually use such areas, I go to entrepreneurship forums to actually get insights on issues that I should address in my speeches, in my articles, and even in ebooks. In fact, this is one of the ebooks that I've written. It's called Millions of Robots. Millions of Robots addresses the inadequacies of the current system of education in Kenya and in so many other countries, especially in Africa, where the education system does not actually equip the students with the ability to be able to depend on themselves or to do something that will help them grow. It is actually based on industrial focus. It is, it is not focused on today, it's focused on the past. Now, if you want this book, Millions of Robots, it, no, does, not, it does not only rebuke the system of education, but actually gives solutions. Well, if you want it, please check the links below and you can I'll let you know how to get your copy, hard copy or soft copy. Now, last week, the fourth session, we talked about um, how to use failure to fuel your business. If you haven't watched that video yet, please check in my YouTube channel right here. Or if you find this on Facebook, please go back to the YouTube channel and connect there. And uh, check the fourth session and, and listen to it. I believe there's something good for you right there. Now, right now, I want us to look at something different. One of the topics that has been discussed recently is the way that um, business people end up lonely and anxious. And the topic of today is why running your business or running your own business leads to anxiety and loneliness. Why is it that so many business people end up lonely and anxious? And especially if you're a new, a new person in business, if you, if you just started, you're two years old in business, why is it that they end up lonely and anxious? Well, let me decode a bit of it here. When you start your business, and maybe the first two years, there's a chance that you will run everything in your business from the managerial positions and activities all the way to the janitorial <laughs> activities. And that, that sounds awkward. From You do everything from the managerial to the janitorial businesses. Everything in between is all yours. Which means you will research, you will create the product, you will market it, you will attend to the customers, and including their, uh, their complaints, which means the entire customer support is yours. And then again, you will do the record keeping. Jeez, that's a lot, a lot of work to do for one person, which means you end up spending your day and night focusing on the business. You end up being a worker when you thought you would be a manager, when you thought that starting your business would actually give you freedom. Well, it doesn't come that easy, but that doesn't mean that you should resort to anxiety and loneliness. That doesn't mean that you should spend every minute of your day on it. Well, you're wondering, like, what else am I supposed to do? I've tried freeing up my time. Well, why don't we talk about it? Why is it? Why does running your own business lead to loneliness and anxiety? Well, I believe that there's nothing wrong doing the managerial jobs as well as the janitorial jobs. There's nothing wrong being the manager and the worker at the same time. In fact, it's a very good thing to start with because it gives you a it gives you a new perspective or the perspective of how does this feel. So that if in the event that you outsource, you know what to expect. Now, I need us to address this. What brings in the loneliness and what br brings in the anxiety? Which, by the way, both of them are just destructive to your brain. They actually uh, they, they will actually mess up your health. So what is bringing in this? Why is it that when you, 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 you conduct your, or you start running your own business, that these two things come in? 
Now, I need you to focus on this. Listen to these five things that bring about the loneliness and the anxiety, which most of the mentors and the um, motivational speakers may not mention them, but actually, if you're keen, you will hear that they're actually telling you how to avoid them. Now, the first thing that I notice that brings in the anxiety and the loneliness in people who are running their own businesses, the first thing is that they're afraid to trust other people to do the work. They have this feeling of nobody does it better than me. I'm like, dude, okay, fine. Nobody does it better than you. You're the manager and the janitor and, and the janitor and everything in between. But surely, 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 if you don't trust people to do things, you end up in anxiety and loneliness. Number two is the fear of speaking out, the fear of sharing. Because in sharing, you actually expose your weakness. In sharing, you could say, speak out your idea and someone could steal it. Those are the thoughts most of us have when we are running our businesses. We feel that if I tell someone about what I'm doing, they're going to start this idea, they're going to run faster than me, they're going to be better than me. Okay? But trust me, you will face anxiety and loneliness soon. Number three, the other reason why the loneliness and anxiety steps in really fast is because people like this, you know, they're always chasing every second of their life. I remember when I had my cyber cafe somewhere in Botswana. It was interesting that I would be in the cyber cafe in the morning by 7.30 and I would leave by 5.30 and then, you know, I, I had to travel one hour forward and one hour back home. And then I'd spend my entire evening trying to repair a computer that was dropped over the office. So actually I took work home and I'd be working all night and by 4 o'clock I'd be preparing my kids to go to school. By 5 I need to be out and start my journey to the bus stop and of course to the office. So actually there were days that I didn't sleep. I did not actually sleep a wink, you know, like in my bed. So that resulted to me sleeping in the bus. It was the easiest way. So in fact, I would say that that actually brought up the swelling of my feet. I've noticed that since then my feet swell whenever I sit for long. I don't know whether they are interconnected, but I remember that that's when it started. So this is one thing. Because I was chasing every minute, I actually had no time to rest. Anxiety and loneliness definitely steps in. The fourth thing is most of the people who are starting their businesses do not create time for others. It's an aspect of selfishness. You ask them something, and you're like, I don't have time. I have to do this. I have to do this. You don't understand how busy I am. So this thing actually leads, the, the, the fact that you're not creating time for others, not only does it lead to anxiety and loneliness, because you're too focused on yourself being a worker, you forget why you're here. And you stop listening to your clients. And you stop listening to people who would have become your clients. You start ignoring, ignoring their complaints. The longer you ignore them, what do they do? They start diverting to your neighbor. How do you like that? So you're in business for yourself, alone. Alone, lonely. Now, the, fourth, uh, the fifth thing is greed. The greed overtakes, or greed to make money overtakes the desire to serve. Remember, when you're in business, you're actually creating solutions for your customers. You're the doctor who carries the solutions to your customers' problems. They, the minute that you, you start focusing on making more money and you forget the client who is bringing in the money, what happens is, listen to this, you start saying the end justifies the mean. Anywhere the money comes, anywhere the money comes, my friend, then who are you serving? Yourself? And that's why you see people who, for example, people in water business, who are selling water, instead of selling clean water, they start fetching tap water and closing it up and selling it. The end justifies the mean as long as money comes through. Anxiety and loneliness has overcome them and greed even gets becomes the next big step. Actually, it starts with the greed and because you're now under pressure to, to meet the greed needs, all that you do is do the wrong thing. And I can tell you this, when the desire for money overcomes the desire to serve, not only will you be lonely and anxious, but sooner or later you'll be paying more bills in the hospital than you can ever think, than the bill that you pay for uh, creating a product. So how do we avoid this? How do we avoid these five things? Because obviously they are with us. And 
the minute you start a business, it means you're a potential for this. These things will happen. I would recommend five things. The first thing, start attending small events. In fact, start attending small events and plan to do so twice in a month. And when you attend these small events and doing them twice in a month, just connect with two people. Only two people. Don't try to connect with everybody. This is not a business card giving event. It's not a venture to go and distribute your cards. It's a time to connect with just two people. Get to hear them. Be the kind of person who wants to have an intimate conversation about their businesses. And of course, I'm not talking of weddings and the likes. I'm talking of business events. And they're there. Check on Facebook and check what's going on in your environment and attend just two of those in a month. Connect with two people and let that conversation that you will hold be so, so intimate. Know their business in and out. Like ask them the questions about their business. And in return, they will also be asking you the questions. The good thing with this is that in this exchange, it helps you relax. It, it's also a learning session for you. Now, the second thing you should do is get a mentor. I know I cannot overemphasize the need for a mentor. And if you're so scared to pay a mentor so early, then get an accountability partner. And that could be a buddy. It could even be your mother. Let there be someone who can ask you, how are you doing? You said you would do this. Are you doing it? You know, the advantage of a mentor is because they have a bit more knowledge than you, than you do, they will guide you. But if you're so scared of getting one, or there are no free mentors as such. I mean, if you get one, you're so lucky, but it's not very easy to get a free mentor. If you get one, they might not be in business. However, get a mentor. And if you can get one, get an accountability partner. Remember, Rome was not built in a day. Neither was it built by one person. Your business will not be built in a day. Neither will it be built by one person. You definitely need a mentor and an accountability partner or an accountability partner who can always remind you the areas you said that you're struggling with and they guide you through it. Sometimes just having someone listening to you will knock off that anxiety. It knocks off that loneliness. Let me tell you what, if you're referring to one night of struggling with a way of making your product as loneliness, you don't know loneliness yet. Loneliness is when you have a whole month wondering how you're supposed to make ends meet. When you know you have bills to pay and you don't know how. And yes, your business getting, you know, like you're supposed to be pushing this business. When you know you're supposed to be getting a client and you're not getting there and you're stuck. You shouldn't be getting stuck. Get an accountability partner. Get a mentor. It will really help. Number three is plan. Plan, plan, plan. And when you finish planning, delegate. I know you're thinking, it's my thing. I'm doing it alone. Plan your time. Plan the number of days that you need to work. But also... There are things that you can actually push to someone else. For example, in my company, Fine World, we have I have um, an accountant who is outsourced, and we only meet once in a month. Where now we have that one meeting, we sit and look at my math, and they help me through, and I pay them for that one hour. You see, it doesn't have to be so crazy. It is something that you can actually do. You don't have to worry about everything. Come on, being in business that is it's not a jail time thingy. It is something that you should be able to work with someone. So plan, 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 and delegate. There are things that you can delegate. Please delegate them. Don't be alone. Don't be lonely. And don't be stuck with anxiety. The fourth thing is volunteer. Volunteer somewhere. Whether at children's home, whether it's a training thing, just go there and volunteer your services. Mentor somebody. Teach somebody. Help somebody. Because by doing these things, you're actually sharpening yourself. Remember, when you mentor somebody, they ask you questions. When you teach somebody, they ask you questions. It forces you to go and research. It takes your mind off yourself and takes you to, you know, there are humans around you. People could even ask you about your own business in the process. And that actually helps you address the issue of, do I have the right product for my people? Such, you only get such opportunities when you volunteer, when you mentor, when you teach, when you help other people it will knock off that anxiety like it will knock off that loneliness because now you have someone else that you can think about besides yourself then of course there's the fifth thing that you can do and this is to remember the purpose of your business i know you're thinking like my business is supposed to make me money 
Really? Only after you've served the client. The purpose of your business is to acquire and retain your customers profitably. Now, let me clarify this. To acquire means to go and get new clients. To retain means to keep them while you're serving them satisfactorily. And then finally, the profitability comes in in every transaction you do. Whenever you serve your clients, every transaction should be profitable. Now, let me correct this statement right there. Profitability does not necessarily mean that you are actually getting financial profit. A referral is actually a profitable thing. You might get maybe your accountability partner telling you, you know, this product that you're selling, please give it to me at this price. It's not the real price. It probably is uh, you're just simply like swapping money. So it's at the cost price. There's no profit onto it. But in return, I will introduce you to two people who I know will need it. And you'll be shocked. A lot of people say, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm in business. Dude, let me tell you what. If you do that for someone and they give you those two people that are coming to buy at the right price, you just got your marketing budget halved. You got someone to do it for you. Of course, I don't recommend that you outsource your marketing. I, I, I always recommend start doing your marketing yourself. But if you can get that help, someone who says, give it at a lower price and I will refine you. Maybe it's because they don't have enough money. But if they can refine you and bring you clients who pay better, my friend, your marketing budget has been halved by, by almost 70%. And, and you can get that working out for you even better. Now, I'm thinking, you're wondering, like, where, where does that leave me? Let's recap the entire thing. But this time, I want us to address the problem and how you can avoid the trap of loneliness and anxiety. So initially, we talked about, the first thing we talked about is um, anxiety and loneliness comes when people are afraid to trust other people. And you have a problem of trusting other people to help you i would recommend that you start by attending events and listen to other people how are they doing it because just jumping out into it might be a bit scary but listening to other people and how they are doing it might actually help you just connect with those two people and then the other thing is uh, the second point we said the fear of speaking out the fear of speaking out and sharing your problems because you're afraid that your product might be stolen or something of that sort or maybe that you're afraid that someone might laugh at you in that case, I recommend get yourself a mentor, get yourself an accountability partner, someone you can trust, someone you can open up to. Then the third thing is the issue of chasing time, always trying to micromanage every second around your time. I recommend that you plan, plan your day, plan your time, plan how many days in a week you want to work, how many hours in a week you want to, I mean, hours in a day you want to work. Delegate some things, stop chasing around minutes and seconds. You will never get them anyway. We all have the leverage of time, 24 hours. Please stop killing yourself. And the fourth thing was the issue of being selfish such that you have no time for others. That will bring you loneliness and anxiety, but you can solve it if you start volunteering, teaching, mentoring, and helping other people. The fifth issue is the issue on greed, where you are so greedy for money and you start forgetting why you're in business. You're greedy for money and you start thinking the end justifies the means. The end does not always justify the means. And in this case, remember why you're in business or what's the purpose of your business. The purpose of your business is to acquire and retain customers profitably. And when you have that in mind, you're more devoted to serve and serve compassionately. And when you do that, you become more profitable. I hope you put all this into use. I'm your mentor, Magdalene Kamau Otieno. Wishing you a super productive week ahead. Remember, you're on a mission. Do it, live it.